All right, well, welcome, Kyle. Uh, this is what we call a conversation with. It'll be a conversation with Kyle Troop. And uh, just going to ask each other some questions, have a conversation, and learn more a little bit about each other. And um, that's just kind of how we do it. So I'm going to just jump right to it. I, you know, I, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. Um, you know, you are in a unique position now with not the, just the PBA, but with the industry as a whole. So I want you to tell me your impression of, given the fact that you've made so much money, I mean, you're at $480,000, $490,000, somewhere right around in there. Yeah. And, you know, and the, and the season's like we're in July, so I mean, we've still got another five months to go. So, you know, you're close to this half a million dollar mark, which no bowler ever has done that in a, in a season. What does that feel like, dude? Like, what does that feel like? Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's nice. You know, it's uh, definitely, you know, financially set, you know, financially stable as far as that goes. Uh, so that obviously, you know, loosens the swing up, you know, obviously on the lanes, it kind of makes things a little easier. But I guess whenever I kind of step back and look at it, you know, from a third person point of view, like what's going on in the sport, like you said, you know, breaking an earnings record, I never would have thought I was going to be a, a record holder by any means. But, uh, you know, to do that, you know, that kind of shows and, you know, because I've had conversations with people about the sport and kind of like where we're headed, the direction that we're headed with the sponsorship, you know, I don't think that record is going to last very long because, you know, I think we're going to continue to bowl for more and more money. And, you know, if I've got a kind of, you know, I guess I'm going to be money bags or, you know, the, the money man for the PBA. You know, if I can kind of help them and, you know, promote the sport in ways that I can do, you know, with what I do through the sport, um, you know, I'm all, I'm all for that because, you know, I think that's going to only help us, you know, get more sponsors, make better shows, you know, have a better product to get more money so that we can all make $500,000 a year. You know, it'd be nice for that to be fifth on tour. And I think that could happen in a couple of years, you know, if everything goes right. What do you think about that? I mean, I think I think it's headed in the right direction in terms of sponsorships and stuff like that. And I think you personally, just watching over the past couple of years, a lot more people are attaching to you the image. And I think you're one of the first people to really have like an image. There's Pete, there's Belmo, and then there's Kyle. Like you know Kyle as the guy with the fro that throws the two-handed. And ever, like if you have that association, I think it helps you, as well as the PBA, to grow, like, which I think is what the PBA needs in the long run, is yeah. to have those couple guys that are their core guys that they can say, hey, Kyle, hey, Bomo. Well, you know, and that's one of the, the things, you know, there's a few things to comment on that, but one thing is that, you know, that's one thing that Coley and Bolero brought to the table when they purchased the PBA was we want to build brands. You know, we want to build player brands. I kind of already had one, you know, the wild clothes, the Afro, you know, my antics, you know, I got to thank my father for that because I grew up watching him just, you know, make all these moves on the lane and it's just natural, thankfully, you know, because if I was trying to put on a show and like, you know, act shots out and stuff like that, yeah, then that would just like be miserable yeah. to even think about. But, you know, that was the thing is they want to build more brands, you know. Simo, you know, he's kind of the bad boy of bowling right now. You know, you got to have one. You know, there's a villain. You know, there's always a villain in the sport. You know, a lot of people don't like Tom Doherty. You know, he's kind of like the villain on TV sometimes, like Rash. You know, there's a few bad guys, some good guys, some entertaining, entertaining guys. So I think... I think that's going to only continue to grow. I think more bowlers may start coming out of their shell a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, because it's it's an unbelievable feeling. And Detroit was, you know, I haven't felt like that on TV in a long time. Like Portland was great, you know, but they were limited to still 100 people. So they could have packed it with more people during, you know, throughout the weekend. But there was 300 people in Detroit and they were loud. Like, I mean, they were all about the fro. And, you know, that that's very humbling, you know, that, I, I mean, I'm blessed to play a game and do what I love for a living. So, you know, I'm going to try and entertain, you know, 
play to the crowd. You know, growing up, that's what you did. You know, a lot of the guys back in the day, Marshall Holman, you know, several of them, they were showmen. And, you know, actually also when Bolero purchased the PBA, we had a player meeting, I remember, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Marshall talked about, like, being a showman, you know, like pretty much not really telling the guys, like, hey, you need to kind of entertain more, but, like, hey, you need to not be so boring type deal. And I completely understand it for people that don't. You know, you're bowling for your family, money and food on the table. If you're not a guy that gets, you know, look at Sam Cooley, mm -hmm. bowls 300 and, like, barely cracks a smile. <laughs> like, if I bowl 300 on TV, <laughs> we're going to be, gonna we're gonna be picks flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, and I just think players see that and, you know, it's, it's like I say, it's just very humbling because, you know, whenever I, I look at everything, like every situation from, like, a third-person point of view, like an outside of the box to like, ju you know, what's happening. Like, all right, well, what's happening right now? I'm bowling really well. I'm leading points, breaking records, you know, putting on some shows, playing with the crowd. I'm having a blast. I love it. And, uh, you know, if that's on my shoulders, I don't really feel, you know, I guess that kind of goes back to your original question. Maybe like, how do I feel as far as being in this position? It's great. You know, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional bowler entertain you know put on a show make people enjoy watch bowling you know win or lose yeah and then i think that's the other thing i mean i'm gonna let you know how i feel i mean i'm like yelling on tv and stuff like i'm whenever i'm mad but yeah i mean i'm gonna let you know you know i wear my heart on my sleeve my emotions regardless so you know um i don't really feel the pressure of it being like all right you're the lead you know you're the guy you know all right that's fine like let's go you know I want to do this together, you know, bring the PBA up, bring more eyes to bowling. And we have several other guys on tour that I think are kind of realizing that in their own roles as far as like helping the tour grow. Cause like you said, you need your premium, your prime players mm -hmm. to where when you go to sponsors, Hey, look at this is what we got, you know, and they have some other things planned, you know, I think with like the league and stuff like that to kind of make that a better product to present for sponsors as well because that seems to be a pretty easy way to get a following is when you have a team yeah look at all the other sports so yeah it's i think we're in a great position you know and the, the sponsorships just keep rolling in i mean we picked up pbr for the summer everybody loves to drink beer cheers <laughs> cheers <laughs> yeah i mean that's a good point too so i can tell you, you know from my perspective as a sponsor of the pba um I think seeing things like this, like with what you're doing, it's good for everybody. It's good for us as a sponsor, even though we don't sponsor you. CTD does not sponsor Kyle Troop, um, but we do sponsor the PBA and we do have players that we do sponsor on the PBA tour. But I think that it's important for everybody um, to have guys like yourself that are that balance between talent and showman, because it's a balance. Like I've seen players that are great showmen but don't have talent you know what I mean and, and vice versa so yeah. you got to have both and, and I, I think what you're doing is incredible because it does have the good balance and the fact that you're being able to now really accelerate I mean I've been able to watch your career from when you were a little punk kid going to bowl you know the, the world series for the first time you know what I mean I remember that yeah. and to watch you grow um to, to now to like this this superstar like the man to be right now I, I think that's pretty cool not only as a fan because I'm a fan of bowling but um, as, as a sponsor and as a as a fan of the PBA so I think all of that kind of ties together to say that what the PBA is doing is taking the right steps to get this sport headed in the right direction that it needs to go in yeah you know and that's only going to be better you know growing up you know college bowlers coming out on tour, see, all right, well, I can go to the PBA and I can bowl for $250,000 five times a year and a hundred grand five, five other times a year. Then we're talking some money, you know, so that's, and like the tournament of champions prize fund this year was unbelievable. Like seventh place was 25,000. Like, that's good. Like 13th place is five figures. So that was something we hadn't seen. I've never bowled a tournament like that on tour, so I was like, this is what's up. Like, right. I bowled Bill O'Neill in position round, $5,000 pretty much action match right. for seventh and eighth. And I'm like, 
All right, we got you know, let's get bowl one more game, but uh, you know, and that just makes for better life, you know, right? And, you know, just uh, want to see more people succeed, you know, because yeah, it is still kind of tough on tour to to make a living, you know, once you get sponsored and stuff like that, it might become a little easier, but you know, it can still it's still grind, you know, bowling against the best bowlers in the world, so definitely want to see, you know, mm -hmm. as the younger talent, which is only increasing more and more uh you know see them have a good product to go to you know after they get out of college you know they come to the pros and win one get paid you know that's that's what i want to see is when you win get paid you know like the kind of sucks but it is what it is you know the u.s open you know the the masters they only pay thirty thousand, but Hey, I mean, nobody's ever going to complain about that. And I'm not one to <laughs> complain about 30,000 by any means. But, you know, it just, it was nice to see Frankie get a win with a major, you know, and actually, you know, get paid a decent amount for it, winning the 100,000 this year. So, right. Right. You know, bring on the money. Money bags. Money bags. Bigger bags. Money bags. Money bags. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. I want to, I want to know what it's felt like over the past couple years to, your, just your progression, um, we kind of talked about it just briefly um, over the past day, just from your exposure to getting on tour and then bowling more on tour, as well as um, working full time at another job. Um, what has it felt like from going in the position to, quote, striking to eat to being the number one guy on tour? You know, um I guess, well, it started at Wendy's, you know, managing Wendy's there. And, and that was a blessing in its own. You know, it taught me people skills, taught me how to talk to people, handle situations, handle freaking people coming in, screaming at me, wanting to throw a cheeseburger at me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Never thought I'd see so many irate people, you know, over like pickles or something like that. <laughs> like, but anyways, you know, so that taught me a lot of stuff, you know, growing up and time management and all that. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of that's kind of helped me, you know, on tour, just being able to handle the other part of tour, which is living on the road, you know, figuring out how to handle that and find a process through all that. But as far as the bowling goes, you know, it was, it was a grind. It was tough. It was really, really tough, you know, taking the bumps, you know, learning, having good people, you know, having the right people mm -hmm. around you to do it with was key too, you know. When I was younger, running around with the boys, Connor, Simo, you know, that was that was pretty much the group right there. And, uh, you know, get signing with Storm was huge for me, you know, to, to then just have some help from the reps mm -hmm. and just to gain knowledge from them. It's not like, hey, throw this ball, Kyle. Like, you know, do this, do this. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. And, uh, but just to start mm -hmm. gaining knowledge from, from, better resources than I had, you know, that was a big step. And then, you know, the last year and a half, you know, whenever I've kind of elevated and well, the one thing was I figured out how to slow my ball down. I mean, that was it right there. I mean, that was a, uh, that was like evolution. A was like, roll the ball, like don't throw it to the back of the building. So, you know, that was a many year struggle for me. And then once I figured out speed control, then I was like, okay, I could play fourth arrow too. Like it doesn't have to be fourth arrow to third arrow. And, you know, once we figured that out, then it's kind of figuring out how to, you know, get past great pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know, then you got to start fine tuning everything. And on a separate note, the Tiger Woods documentary is unbelievable. I don't know if y'all seen no. that. The one on HBO? Yeah, the one on yeah, HBO. That was amazing. I've only seen the first episode. No, that's amazing. Which was like all the great stuff about Tiger. I haven't even got to the second episode which was like, I guess, the downfall. But, yeah. you know, and that was the mental game was a big part of it for me, was maturing mentally, you know, some of the things that happened in life. You know, losing my mom was huge. You know, I learned a lot from that. And um, and then physically, you know, I got to thank, you know, Sean Ryan again. You know, I thanked him all year long. You know, worked with him, kind of making the tweaks there. Uh, that's kind of opened up a whole new playbook, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I look back at it, you know, I think, and I look and I'm like, well, there was times that I worked hard and then there was times I didn't work hard. What happened when I worked hard? I won. What happened when I didn't? I didn't win. 
then I was like, you know, this is pretty simple. You can either work or you don't. And I, and you know, I say, I think work is so much more than just practicing, Mm -hmm. taking care of your body, working out, you know, I don't really do too much mental training. Like I'm not a big reader. You know, I'll be honest there. Like I don't read very much, but, um, you know, all that, you know, the whole process of being a bowler process on the lanes process off the lanes you know if I work in all those categories then I've seen even higher success so it tells me you know hard work pays off kind of like O'Grady said when he won the TSC and many other bowlers have said and so I just kind of look back at that and then tell myself now like all right well let's just keep working you know Belmo Belmo's still still the best like he's still the the best bowler on the planet. Yeah, I, th- I might be right now, but Belmo's still the goat. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, he's won five Player of the Years, all the majors. It's not about getting there; it's about staying there, and that's where he figured that out. You know, and so I'm gonna try and learn how to continue to keep working and stay in the process without like overdoing it, like without overkill, like. Yeah, I would like some some weekends off, but I look at my schedule and I'm like, well, we're doing this, 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 this. I'm like, all right, you know, maybe we'll rest a little later on in the year. But, you know, kind of figuring that out, I think it's all, that's the next part of the process is figuring out how to continue the success. That makes a lot of sense to me because I remember when we were in the pandemic, I remember meeting up with you somewhere, I don't remember where it was, but I met up with you somewhere and you were, you were going to work out and you kept doing all this bowling wherever you could. It was like, if there was a bowling tournament, no matter what kind of tournament it was, and it was within driving distance from where you were, you were going to go bowl. And I know a lot of other bowlers, you know, they, they, they didn't. They, they weren't see, seeking out those opportunities that presented themselves. And some of them just could, like it just wasn't an opportunity. Yeah. But I do, I do vividly remember thinking, man, this guy's really serious about this thing. Like he's really buckled down and is really trying to figure out how to get better. And you, you about the thing about Belmont, and I think, I mean, I think you're 100% right there. I think the thing that, that is amazing about him is the ability to stay there, to stay in that position. And I think a lot of that is, you know, he's got a great balance, you know, because you can overdo it. You can overdo the, 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 the bowling. You can bowl too much. Yeah. You can also not bowl enough. And there's this weird fine balance that you got to figure out um, to be sharp enough to, to be able to execute, but to not be so over wore out, beat up that you don't care anymore. You know what I mean? And I think, I think you... For me, what's going to be cool is watching you go through this next step to see how you met, how you mature through that stage of it. Because now you've gotten to this spot, so watch you continue to work and continue to figure out how to stay. And it's going to be really cool to watch. And you know, it's it's been fun to to know to know you from when you just started out. And I remember we were we were in Reno and you're playing the gutter like you're playing like one two board. And I'm like, it. this guy's two handed. <laughs> <laughs> and he's playing the gutter like like no two hander does that. And then now you know now you know now you have all this versatility and and speed control and your you know, your mental game's tighter. And it's just it's it's just kind of fun to watch. And I know the people that are that are kind of watching this are like, yeah, you know, this guy's kind of a fun guy to watch. I mean, you've had everybody here just cracking up laughing at random times. Just mm-hmm. just this just how you are. So you know, it's it's cool. It's yeah, really I mean, cool. you know, bowling's supposed to be fun. Yeah, that's what Guppy always said was have fun with it. You know, and that's. One of the things I always say, you know, on videos or what's a tip, have fun. You know, yeah, it's very easy to say and very hard to do sometimes, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game, you know, could be punching the clock, sitting behind a, de- behind a desk, but, you know, I get to bowl and practice and work, work out, you know, still better, I think, than, you know, some of, some of the other jobs. <laughs> do you like pickles? It. Yeah. Oh yeah, you like pickles? Yeah, yeah. I don't like pickles. I don't like pickles at all. Well, anyway, all right. So uh, you know, I think that's probably good for this first uh, conversation with Kyle Troop, and uh, we'll take a little break, and we'll come back and do another one. All right.